we are having Balaram Purnima eight days before Lord Krishna. So I said, well, uh, give me some time. <laughs> I'll think about it. So this morning I brought it up to some of my learned associates here. And they came up, one Bondavodi came up with a, a reference which was given by His Holiness Lokana, goes, Lokana Swami Maharaj. Lokana Swami Maharaj was asked that is Balaram eight days older than Lord Krishna? So Lokana Swami said, no, he's one year and eight days older than Lord Krishna. And he said, this is stated in the Garga Samhita. There's references there in Garga Samhita. Well, Garga Samhita, you know, that's, you know, some obscure Puranic literature or something. But anyway, it didn't solve the problem. Now we have three issues. Is it eight days? Is it 14 days? Or is it one year and eight days? Anyway, Lord Balarama is Dauji, right? He's a big brother. And Lord Krishna is Krishna Kanaya. Up in our total temple, Krishna, Radha Krishna Kanaya. If you go on the Braja Mandal Parikrama, which begins in the month of Kartik, Brahmanpur Karti, go through the forest of Braja, and one of the places which the devotees will visit every year is the Dauji temple, the temple of Lord Balarama. Lord Balarama is the big brother. That's the main thing we want to understand. Lord Balaram comes first. He appears first before Lord Krishna. He appeared, first of all, in the womb of Devaki. So Lord Krishna and Lord Balarama are brothers. But Lord Balarama, well, after spending some seven months in the womb of Devaki, then he was transferred to the womb of Rohini. By the influence of Yoga Maya, he was transferred over to Goku, where Rohini was staying. So Lord Balaram appeared first in the womb of Devaki and we understand Lord Balaram comes to prepare for the appearance of Lord Krishna. So Lord Balaram is showing us the mode of servant, of being the servant of Lord Krishna. Now actually Lord Balaram is also the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is also Bhagavan, and he has all of the opulences of Lord Krishna. Wealth, beauty, fame, knowledge, strength, and renunciation. Everything is there in Lord Balaram. Only difference is the color. Lord Krishna is the blackish, bluish color, and Lord Balarama is the white color. But otherwise, they're the same. They're e they have equal potencies. But Lord Balarama, although he's the Supreme Lord, he comes in the mood of servant to show us the importance of giving service to Lord Krishna. And Lord Balarama serves Lord Krishna in all the different rasas. He has that ability that he can serve Lord Krishna in so many different ways. So he comes first of all into the womb of Devaki, preparing everything for Lord Krishna to come. Just like before the, the king will come, first of all, some ministers will come and they will make sure all the arrangements are made nicely for the king. So in a similar mood, Lord Balaram comes into the womb of Devaki and he makes sure everything is arranged nicely. He makes a bed 
for Lord Krishna to lay on when he is in the womb of Devaki. Actually, Lord Balarama serves Lord Krishna in many wonderful ways. He expands himself in different forms such as Mahavishnu, Garbo Dakashaya Vishnu and Shiro Dakashaya Vishnu. The three Karusha avatars are all expansions of Lord Balarama. And in this way, Lord Balarama is serving Lord Krishna, arranging for the creation of this material world. This is one of his services for Lord Krishna, to create this material world because the Lord will then come sometimes to visit this place and he will perform pastimes here. So Lord Balaram arranges for that. And then Lord Balaram also comes as Sankrishan. And Sankrishan also you have Anantashesha. So these different forms, of, they're all expansions of Lord Balarama and they're all meant for the service of Lord Krishna. In the form of Anantashesha, Lord Balarama is continually reciting the glories of Lord Krishna. Anantashesha has unlimited numbers of foods in the form of the celestial serpent. He has unlimited numbers of foods. And with each of the mouths of these foods, he is reciting the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is showing us what is the business of devotees, that we should use our tongue for chanting the holy name of the Lord. If our tongue is not used like that, then our tongue is just like the tongue of the frog which is about its own death. So we are encouraged to read, to constantly chant the glories of the Lord. And Lord Balaram is inspiring all of us how to do that. With his unlimited mouth and as Ananta Shesha, he has been describing the glories of the Supreme Lord since time immemorial. And each of the mouths have never exhausted. And they've never, one mouth has never said what another mouth has said. The glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are so unlimited that there's, you cannot exhaust them. And that is shown to us through Ananta Shesha, who is simply an expansion of Lord Balaram. Lord Balaram also expands himself in different forms for the service of the Lord. For example, the shoes of the Lord are considered an expansion of Lord Balaram. And the pavitra, the brahminical thread which is worn around the neck, that is also another form of Lord Balaram. The umbrella which is held over the head of the Supreme Lord is another form of Lord Balarama. And also the, the seat which the Lord sits on and the bed on which he rests, they are all expansions of Lord Balarama for the service of Lord Krishna. So Lord Balaram is our Adi Guru, he is the original spiritual master. You want to get inspiration for devotional service? We can pray to Lord Balaram. Approach Lord Balarama. It is said, the spiritual teacher is more merciful than Krishna. And the most merciful of all the spiritual teachers, Lord Balarama. So today is a very special day. 
we're all praying, we all would like to get the mercy of Lord Balarama. So Lord Balarama comes in this world, and we said he transferred to the womb of Rohini and appeared there in Goku. And after Lord Krishna's birth, then Vasudev brought baby Krishna over to the home of Nanda Maharaj. Rohini was also staying in the home of Nanda Maharaj. So it meant that the two, Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram, could be together for their childhood pastimes. They could both be together taking care of the cows and enjoying the milk products and being with the wonderful devotees of Vrindavan. Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram both relish these loving affairs with the people of Vrindavan. And just as Lord Krishna has his uh, dearest devotees in the form of the cowherd girls of Vrindavan, Lord Balarama also has his own group of cowherd girls in Vrindavan. There are gopis who are devotees to Lord Krishna and there are gopis who are devoted to Lord Balarama. Lord Balarama enjoys being with the cows. We see the mood of Lord Krishna after he left Vrindavan, after he gone from Vrindavan, he asked Lord Balarama to bring a message to the gopis. No, he asked Uddhava to bring a message. But he also sent Balarama also back to Vrindavan because he knows that Lord Balarama can also console the minds of the people of Vrindavan who were burning in the fire of separation from Lord Krishna. So Lord Balarama performs many wonderful services in the service of Lord Krishna. One of the pastimes which is described is concerning Anirudh, who was the grandson of Lord Krishna, and how this Anirudh got involved with a girl called Usha. And Usha was the daughter of someone called Bana, Bana Sura. So Bana was actually one of the sons of Bali Maharaj. So this Banasura was very powerful and he had a, a thousand arms and he was able to give pleasure to Lord Shiva by playing Madanga. Today we had, I counted, eight Madangas. <laughs> but Banasura with his one thousand arms, he was playing. And his playing was so nice he brought pleasure to Lord Shiva. So Lord Shiva told him, ask any favor from me and I will be happy to give you. So Banasura asked Lord Shiva, he said, you please stay in my kingdom and if ever I am attacked, you can defend me. You can help me fight the enemy. So Lord Shiva agreed, all right, I will stay in your kingdom. So it happened that Bana had this beautiful daughter. Bana Sura had this one very beautiful young girl named Usha. A young lady, princess. Bana was a powerful king. So Usha, she, her father was very careful with her. He did not let her go and associate with other men. He kept her with the other girls and they were in a private place away from all the men. No lusty men could even see them. So these girls were kept in private. So it happened that this Banasura's daughter, Usha, she was staying with this other girl, but during the night 
she was having some kind of dream. And in her dream, she was saying, Oh my darling, oh my darling. Like she was talking like this to her lover in dream. So the other girl who was with her, she could hear her speaking like this. So she woke her up and she inquired from her. And she asked her, who is this man in your dreams? And Usha said, I don't know. I've never saw him before. But he was in my dream. So this girl who was with Usha, her name was Chitraleka. She was actually the daughter of one of the ministers of Banasura. So she had yoga power. And she was also something of an artist. So she said, I will draw pictures of young men and you tell me which one you saw in your dream. So Chitraleka began to draw pictures of young princes and she drew many, went through many different men. No, no, that's not, no, no. But after some time, she came to the Yadu dynasty. And when she came to the Yadu dynasty, then she drew a picture of, first of all, Lord Krishna. So Usha, could un she could understand there's some similarity here between the man in my dream and this man. But she said, that's not him. So then Usha drew Prajumna, who was the son of Krishna. And then Krishna said, well, it's, it's getting close to him, but still, that's not, that's not the man. So after she drew Prajumna, then she drew Anirudh. And then when she drew this picture of Anirudh, then Usha blushed, and she found her head, you know, like a shy girl, and she said, Yes, that's the man in my dreams. So Chitralika said, No problem. I'll solve the question. And Usha said, I will bring him to you. And Usha had yoga powers. And she went and flew off to Dwarka on her airplane, her celestial yoga airplane. She flew to Dwarka went through all the security of Dwarka and entered into the palace where Aniruddha was resting. So, while he was still resting, she brought him on his bed, she brought him back to the palace where Usha was staying. And Aniruddha wakes up, finds himself in his palace, with this young woman, very attractive young woman. And the two of them get to know each other very well. So it happened that the ladies who were serving there, they could see some changes in Usha. They saw she's not the young girl she used to be. That she must have had some contact with a man. So they informed her father. And when Banasura heard, at first he said, impossible. No man can enter into my palace. I have perfect security. My daughter is protected. They said, well, you should go see for yourself. You go and see. So Banasura came with this military. And he came and he was shocked to see his daughter laying in the arms of a young man. So Banasura immediately wanted to arrest Anirudh. But Anirudh is a Maharati. He is also the personality of Godhead. He is also very powerful. And when these men all came to arrest him, he fought with them. And there was a great battle, a wonderful battle. 
And Bala was appreciating that, oh, this young man is very powerful. He's a very great Maharati. He can fight with all of us. But Bala had weapons. And he was able to, he used his Naga Pashu and he captured Anirudh and put him in his prison. So it happened in Dwarka, nobody knew what had happened to Anirudh. But then Narada Muni came along and Narada Muni told them that Anirudh has been taken a prisoner by Banasur. So they all had to come, they all had to fight. And Lord Balaram also came to fight. And they were all fight. Lord Shiva was fighting, Ganesh was fighting, Kartike was fighting, they were all fighting with each other. Lord Shiva was fighting, Lord Krishna. Everyone, it was a great battle. This, this is Madhurya Leela. Can you see? This is conjugal love. Because of conjugal love, so many problems come about. So, anyway, Kosha and Aniruddha, they, they, the battle was won by Lord Krishna, by the Yadu dynasty, and Banasura was pacified. And he took, he took uh, Usha and Aniruddha back with him to Dwarka. So another time it happened that that, that one, of the daughter, one of the sons of Lord Krishna, he wanted to marry this girl Lakshmana, who was the daughter of Duryodhana. So, he knew that this girl was not going to pick me. The girl was to have a Swayambar ceremony. She was to pick her husband. So this grandson of the son of Lord Krishna, he knew that well, she's not going to pick me, so I'll pick her. <laughs> so when she was coming by to look at the different men, he picked her up and took her off. And so there was a great battle, all that, they were all very angry, oh, you didn't let her pick her husband, you came, and so they all came and Duryodhan came with Bhishma and other soldiers, okay, and they arrested this, who, who was it? What's the name of the, the son? Huh? Samba. Samba, yes, Samba. Samba means one who is, needs to be with his mother all the time. You know, just like when a boy is very mischief, they need to be with the mother to take care of the boy. So this Samba is one who is always with him, who is very mischievous, very naughty. So he took this girl, <laughs> she was supposed to pick her husband, but he picked her. So it caused a big battle and Samba got arrested. So when they heard that Samba had been arrested like that, then Lord Krishna was going to come with his army. But this time, Lord Balaram said, let me go there. I'm friends with them. I will go there and settle everything. So they said, all right, you go Balaram, you, that will be better. You can go and settle everything. Won't have to have a big war. Won't have to be so many deaths and everything. So Lord Balaram went there along with Uddhava and different people. They accompanied him, seniors from Dwarka. And they went there. Hastinapur. And when they heard that Lord Balaram had come, then Duryodhana was very happy because Duryodhana was very friendly to Lord Balaram. Lord Balaram had taught Duryodhana how to use the club. That was another story. That happened in the time of the Shaman Taka Jewel. When we were hunting for the Shaman Taka Jewel, at that time Lord Balaram had decided that he would stay in the, at the palace of uh, Janaka. And 
and they while he was staying there, Duryodhan was also there, and Duryodhan took advantage of Balarama's association to learn how to fight with the club. So Duryodhan had a lot of respect for Lord Balaram. And when he heard Lord Balaram had come there, he was very happy. And he came up with a welcoming party to give him a very nice reception. But when he heard why Lord Balaram had come there, then he started to get angry. And he started to complain. That, Who are you, Yadu? Yadavas, you people, you come here telling us what to do. Don't you know? We're the kings. You Yadavas, you don't even have a kingdom. You're just like the shoes. You want to be on the head, but you're just like shoes. Don't tell us what to do. Lord Balaram had requested them that I know you've got Samba and Lakshmana, and Lakshmana is his wife, you should give them to me, I want to take them back to Dwarka. But Duryodhan and these other people, they got angry, they thought, who are you telling us what to do? Lord Balaram said, oh, you think I don't have the right on behalf of Lord Krishna, I don't have the right to tell you what to do? I'm coming on behalf of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bhagavan Sri Krishna, and he told, he wants his son released. And you don't want to do it? All right. And let me teach you a lesson. And Lord Balaram said, just like an animal, you cannot give an animal good instruction. You have to use a stick. You use a stick then the animal understands what, what you're trying to do. We see in India every day, you see in the village, they have a stick and they hit one side, they hit the other side, you know, when, to get the animal to do things. So I said, you people are just like animals. So I will take the stick, I will show you. And Lord Balaram, Lord Balaram is also called Haladara the carrier of the plough. We saw this morning on the altar, Krishna Balaram, the Lord Balaram carries the plough. So he's also called Haladara. Hala meaning the plough, the carrier of the plough. So Lord Balaram took his plough and he began to hit the ground and he began to break the earth. And at the same time, he was dragging the whole of Hastinapur into the Yamuna. And the, the, the kings were watching and they saw that Lord Balaram was dragging the whole of the palace of Hastinapur into the Yamuna. And they all fell at his feet and said, Oh, 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 no, no, please, just wait. We're bringing, we're bringing Sampa just now and he can have his wife and we will give dowry everything. They, they immediately became very humble and they begged forgiveness for their offense. So Lord Balaram was showing them the power of the Supreme Lord by his plow, dragging the earth, dragging, hitting the earth and bringing Hastinapura into the Yamuna. Another pastime with the plow was when Lord Balarama was drinking honey. I hope today when we offer the beverage, we always have Varuni for offering to Lord Balaram. Lord Balaram is very fond of Varuni. Actually, I heard that Lord Balaram has two wives. Just as Lord Nityananda has two wives, Lord Balaram also had two wives. I've never found the reference for the second one, but it is told about the first one. We'll tell about the first one in a minute. But first of all, I will tell about Lord Balaram drinking the Varuni. And when he drinks the Varuni, you know the nature of honey, you can get quite intoxicating drinking honey. You drink too much Varuni, you can get intoxicated. And Lord Balaram had been drinking quite a bit of Varuni and he got intoxicated. So while he was in an intoxicated state, 
He said to the Yamuna, Yamuna, come here. He spoke to the Yamuna. He ordered the Yamuna to come closer. Nothing happened. The Yamuna, I'm ordering you, come here. Nothing happened. Oh, oh, all right. Let me show you. Balarama took his plow and began to break the earth. He said, I will break you into tiny streams. You will become little rivulets of water. No more big river. Immediately from out of the Yamuna came the goddess. The goddess of the Yamuna. And she fell at the feet of Lord Balaram and begged forgiveness. My dear Lord, please forgive me. I just wanted to see your glories. I did not know if you were joking or if you were serious. Now I can understand you're serious. I have come. We will bring the Yamuna for you. In this way, the Yamuna River appeared to Lord Balarama and took blessing, took forgiveness from Lord Balarama. And the other pastime with Lord Balaram's plow took place when there was a king named Maharaj Rivata. And Maharaj Rivata had a daughter named Rivati. And this was in, it was not Dwapara Yuga, it was like Satya Yuga or Trinta Yuga. So Maharaj Rivata he wanted to get a suitable husband for his daughter. But he could not decide who would be a good husband for his daughter. So he thought, I will go to Lord Brahma. He was a powerful king. He had the power that he could go to Satyaloka. So he went to see Lord Brahma to ask him who would make a good husband for his daughter. So Ravata got up there at Satyaloka with his daughter and they inquired, we want to see Lord Brahma. So Lord Brahma's secretary said, you have to wait. Lord Brahma is hearing a concert just now. He's enjoying a musical concert. You just wait for some time after the concert. After the concert, then you can go and meet him. So, the Rivata Maharaja, along with his daughter Rivati, they waited. And after some time, they were brought in to meet Lord Brahma. And Lord Brahma inquired from them, Yes, what can I do for you? So the king said, Well, I want to know which king will make a suitable husband for my daughter. So Maharaj Srivata mentioned the names of some kings. And when Lord Brahma heard these names, then Lord Brahma laughed. He said, no, these kings are all dead and gone, long ago. And Maharaj Srivata was shocked. He said, what? How is it? He said, no, I, I was with them just a little while ago, I know them. But Lord Brahma said, yes, but remember, you come here to Satya Loka. On Satya Loka, the duration of time is different from the planet Earth. You'll be waiting here for me for a, some time while I was listening to the concert, but during that time, Many years have come and gone on the earth planet. Remember when Lord Brahma stole away the cows and the coward boys? He took them, he looked away for one moment. He came back after one moment, it was one year. So Maharaj Rivata had gone there to Satyaloka. He'd been waiting on Lord Brahma. He'd been waiting for some time. When the concert was finished, years had passed on the earth planet and all of those kings were dead and gone. So Maharaj Srivat was shocked. He said, then what to do? Who will marry my daughter? So then Lord Brahma said, you go back to earth, 
Just now, the personality of Godhead, Lord Balarama, is appearing on the earth planet. He will make a suitable wife for your daughter. So Lord Brahma, Rivata Maharaji thought, oh, okay, my, my daughter can marry the personality of Godhead. You can't do better than that. That's a good husband. So he came back to earth and he found out about Balarama. However, there was still one problem because, because they were from a previous yoga, they were very tall. You know, we're very small people. So the people in the previous ages were much taller. So from the previous age, Rivata and his daughter, they were very big. So Lord Balarama looked up and supposed to be my wife? There's no big. So he got his plow. No? Just brought her down to his eyes and took her for his wife. So it's described like that. In ninth canto, you can read how Lord Balarama got his wife. It's also mentioned in the tenth canto how Lord Balarama married first before Lord Krishna. Right? Lord Balarama is Dauji. He's the big brother. Big brother gets married first, then the younger brother. That's the proper system. So Lord Balarama got this one wife. Rivati. Other wife I heard was Varuni. Anyway, it said the two wives of Lord Balarama, they came again as the two wives of Lord Nityananda. Two sisters, Janava and Vasudha, the, the two wives of Lord Nityananda. That they were in, originally the two wives of Lord Balarama. So Lord Balarama enjoys many wonderful pastimes with Lord Krishna. And sometimes he will be senior to Krishna and sometimes he will be junior to Krishna. Because he's a big brother. So it happened one time, Lord Krishna kidnapped Rukmini. Rukmini was supposed to marry Sishupal. And the marriage was all arranged and all the kings had come. And then, at the last moment, just when she's coming from the Durga temple, Lord Krishna came and kidnapped Rukmini. Of course, Rukmini had encouraged Lord Krishna to do this. So it was done with her blessings. And then Krishna rode off. But Rukmini had a brother named Rukmini. And Rukmi had arranged his sister's marriage to Sishupal. So he was very angry that I promised Sishupal my sister, he could marry my sister. How can Krishna come and take away my sister? So Rukmi, he vowed, I will kill Krishna. I will kill him I will, and I will bring back Rukmi. He's not going to have my sister. So Rukmini went after Lord Krishna to fight Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna saw him coming and turned to fight with him. And of course Lord Krishna defeated him easily and took him a prisoner. And he was going to kill him. But Rukmini, that, you know, she felt some brotherly affection. And she Oh, oh, please, my, please don't kill my husband, my brother, he's my brother, please spare him. So Lord Krishna thought, well, I have to listen to my wife. He took his sword and he began to cut bits of hair off his head and disfigure him. You know, the Kshatriyas, they don't cut the hair usually, like you see the Sikhs, they have the long hair. So Lord Krishna cut bits out here, a bit out there, and disfigured him. And when Lord Balaram came there and saw Rukmi with all his head cut off like that, all disfigured, then Balaram chastised Krishna and said, Oh Krishna, how could you do this to your brother-in-law? Yeah, Rukmi, Rukmi was, because he, 
Krishna had taken Rukmini as his wife. So Rukmini, the brother, was brother-in-law for Krishna. Lord Balaram has such a wonderful position, he can chastise Krishna. He can say, you shouldn't do this to your brother-in-law. However, later on, after many years, it happened, there was a marriage event. And there was a marriage between people from Rukmi's family and from Krishna's family. A marriage was arranged. And Lord Balaram had come there for the marriage. So while he was at the marriage, after the marriage was over, then the Kshatriyas began to joke with each other and Rukmi was encouraged to challenge Lord Balarama to a game of dice. So Balarama agreed, yes, let's have a game of dice. And they began to throw dice and they were betting. You know, when they throw dice, it's not just game, it's serious stuff. And they were betting and the wagers became quite high. They came very high. In the beginning, they were throwing the dice and Rukmi won. But then the wagers increased ten times. And they went from like ten gold coins, became a thousand gold coins, and then a hundred thousand gold coins. Then 10 million gold coins, you know, huge wagers. So in the beginning, Rukmi was winning. But then Lord Balaram won. And when Lord Balaram won, Rukmi said, No, I'm the winner. You know, you get these kind of people like that. You know, sometimes you, they won't admit they've been defeated. So Rukmi was like that. He said, I'm the winner, not Balaram. And Rukni had his friends there, the king of Kalinga and other people. And they were saying, yes, yes, Rukmi is the winner. And Balaram is sitting and he's getting a little angry, you see. So then he, he, he put the wager up 10 million gold coins. And again Balaram won. And again Rukmi said, no, I am the winner. And then Rupi's friends all, yeah, Rupi's a man, Rupi's a man. <laughs> so Lord Balaram took his club. <laughs> Lord Balaram carries a club, he also carries a club. And he took his club and he just smashed Rupi. And then he came after the other kings who had been laughing and who had been supporting Rupi. So, Lord Krishna was there and he was watching and what can he do? You know, Lord Balaram is his older brother. He can't really tell, oh Balaram, you can't do this, you shouldn't have done that, he's our brother-in-law. And at the same time, he cannot say to Balarama, oh well that Balaram, he was a demon anyway, he deserves to die. Because he said, if Lord Krishna said like that, then Rukmini will not be pleased. So Lord Krishna has to be so careful to please both Lord Balaram and at the same time also Rukmini. So this shows something, what goes on in the family life, you know, family politics. Very, very difficult, right? You all know, you have your families always Take one person's side, the other person doesn't like it. Oh, very easy to have problems in the family affairs. So Lord Balaram, he's a big brother, he can do it. So traditionally, it's a system. We don't worship Lord Balaram with Lord Krishna when Radharani is there. Either Krishna is with Srimati Radharani, or he's with Lord Balaram. You have to keep them separate. It's a different mood, a different rasa. Krishna and Balarama is a different rasa from Radha and Krishna.
Lord Balaram would never appear wherever Radha and Krishna are together. So that's something, something not observed, something people put everybody there. You know, Hindu religion, all the gods. So we put Krishna, Balaram and Radha, but you have to keep them separate. Radha Rani is never there when Lord Balarama is there. Lord Balarama has his own gopis. So these are some of the pastimes of Lord Balarama. How many do you Okay. So Lord Balarama is able to serve Krishna in all the different rasas. Another way in which Lord Balarama serves Lord Krishna. Oh, oh, there was another demon Lord Balarama also killed. That was Dwabida Gorilla. Dwabida Gorilla. Now, Dwabida Gorilla was a powerful, powerful beast. He was also with Lord Ramachandra in the Ramayana. He'd been there, he'd been a devotee, he'd been fighting with the army of gorillas and apes, monkeys who fought against Ravan to win the battle of Lanka. But somehow Dravida had become degraded. He'd become, you know, involved in a lot of drinking and intoxication and things like that. So he lost his he lost the association of his Safely monkeys like Hanuman and he had become degraded. So at one point he saw the gopis and he wanted to enjoy with the gopis. He was also intoxicated. He came before the gopis and made obscene gestures to the gopis. And then Lord Balaram saw him. And then the two of them they got to a big fight. A great fight with each other. They ripped up the trees and broke the trees. They threw rocks and stones at each other. It's a big battle. And Lord Balaram, of course, comes out victorious and killed this Dravida gorilla. So Lord Balarama wants to deliver the devotees, just like when the Lord comes, He comes to give pleasure to the devotees and to annihilate the miscreants, as well as re-establish the principles of religion. So Lord Balarama also did the same thing. He gave pleasure to the devotees. So many nice devotees, they were all very dear to Lord Balarama. We were telling how he lived in Braja as a young child and he was there with the, with the gopis and the gopas and they were enjoying their pastimes together. And then again, Lord Balarama goes to Dwarka with Lord Krishna. When Lord Krishna moved to Dwarka, Lord Balarama also went there with him and lived in Dwarka. And Lord Balarama also came back to Vrindavan to pacify Nanda and Yashoda and to bring news of Lord Krishna to all the people of Vrindavan. So Lord Balarama is doing so much service. In Dasharas, he's the servant of Lord Krishna. In Sakyaras, he's Krishna's friend. They go together in the forest, herding the cows. Sometimes Krishna will massage Lord Balaram, and sometimes Lord Balarama will be massaging Lord Krishna. And Lord Balarama enjoys to be the servant. Although he is a big brother, he has the mood to give service to Lord Krishna. That is the important feature of Lord Balarama giving service to Krishna. And as if, not only is he in that mood of Sakyaras, we see also Vatsalyaras. He is like a parent to Lord Krishna. I was telling how he chastised Lord Krishna for disfiguring 
Rukmi, the brother-in-law, that's a Vatsalya the parent, the mother being a parent, and massaging Krishna, just like the mother will massage her child. So Lord Dalarama would massage Lord Krishna. And even we see conjugal rasas there also, because one of the ways in which Lord Balarama expands himself is as a Nanga Manjari. And as Nanga Manjari, he's able to render service to the divine couple, Radha and Krishna. Lord Balarama himself, he's never with Radha and Krishna. But when he expands in the form of Ananda Manjari, then at that time, then he can come and render service to the divine couple. So in this way, Lord Balarama is able to serve Krishna in all the different rasas. And Lord Balarama is giving so much pleasure to Lord Krishna. Prabhupada said to the devotees, who is stronger? Krishna or Balaram, right? And the devotees were puzzled. Which one is stronger? Who is stronger, Krishna or Balaram? Yeah. Why? Who is strongest? Why? Yeah, because Lord Balaram is leaning on Krishna. If you look at the deities, Lord Balaram is leaning against Krishna. In this way, Lord Krishna is holding up Lord Balaram. So, these are some of the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Balaram. Any question? Any comment? Anything? of the Lord, 
into the heart of the living entity, into everything, into the atoms, and into the heart of the whole living entity. So is it an expansion of Lord Balaram? We understand it's Lord Krishna expanded. Well, we showed, generally we showed it super soul, four arm form, Lord Vishnu, right? So it's a, it's a expansion. You, is it an, a, a, the expansion of... Well, Shiro Takashai Vishnu, we can say Shiro Takashai Vishnu also is, is there. Shiro, Shiro Takashai Vishnu, is that also, can we consider that as the Paramatma? The Lord expands in these different ways. It may, it may be understood like that. The Shiro Dr. Shai Vishnu is on Sweet Week. He's residing on Sweet Week. But he's also considered to be the Super Soul. So he, he expands himself into the heart of all living entities. So it's not Lord Balaram directly, but it's one of the Vish it's Shiva Dakajaya Vishnu who expands as the Paramatma. Okay? Yeah, all right. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna Shri Balaram Mahamahotsabhati. opportunity on behalf of the Temple Management Council to thank His Holiness Bhakti to Bhakti Yeah, yeah.
Yeah, man. 